Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of the Deep Three here with winnersandwiners.com. It's currently Thursday, February 27th. Before we get into today's plays of the day, quick recap of what happened yesterday. We ended up going one and two, could have easily been two and one. Uh, Villanova ended up missing a wide open layup with about 10 seconds left, and that would have given us a cover. But unfortunately, it rolled out, and they ended up only winning by 11. As for the Mercer Citadel over, that game went under by about 20 points. The line ended up going up another point and a half or so. So we got good value on that, but it didn't work out. And then we got a nice easy winner with the Rockets minus 11 as they ended up winning by basically 30. They coasted pretty much the entire game, and the Grizzlies are pretty much screwed moving forward based on the fact that Jackson and Clark are injured. So I expect them to struggle moving forward, and I think that they will definitely fall out of the playoff race. But for today's plays today, a couple of college basketball games as well as an NBA game. Uh, these plays are in no particular order. We're going to be starting with a matchup between Pacific and Loyola Marymount. And we like Pacific minus one and a half. And there are a couple of reasons why we like that matchup. First of all, Pacific and Loyola Marymount already played early, uh, earlier this season. And Pacific won that meeting by 12. Pacific has been a very underrated team in the West Coast Conference as they have won nine of their first 14 conference games, while Loyola Marymount is 4-10 in conference play. Plus, Loyola Marymount has been very underwhelming at home this season, as they are 5-8 and eight against the spread at home this season. So I expect them to struggle once again covering this point spread, uh, in f basically just against a far superior opponent. Pacific ha already has 20-plus wins. They've been very solid this season. New Loyola Marymount still has a losing record. I think this line is a little bit confusing. I think Pacific should win this game by at least 5 points. Plus, if you look at the actual statistical breakdown, Pacific has been the much better team. Pacific is averaging six more points per game. They're averaging roughly six more rebounds per game, and they are also giving up three fewer points per game. So Pacific has the better offense, the better defense, and the better rebounding. Uh, I just think that this game is going to be one-sided. I think Loyola Marymount could keep this close uh, for potentially a half but at the end of the day, I think Pacific should be able to win this game by at least five points. Now, some of you might be wondering late in the season, uh, should I automatically bet on good teams against bad teams in certain spots? And the answer is no, because of the potential of senior night, which is going to be a very big emotional lift for some teams as they will be playing their final games uh, with a specific school. However, Loyola Marymount does play another home game after this one, so this will not be senior night, and I, I don't expect much of an emotional uh, showing for from the seniors for Loyola. I expect that for their next game against San Francisco at home. But either or, uh, I think Pacific is definitely the better team, and I think that this line is a little bit too short. I think this line will climb up to 3.5, potentially, I'd say around 3, 3.5. So for that reason, I like Pacific minus 1.5, and, and that will be the first play. Now the second play is going to be on a matchup between Gonzaga and San Diego. Uh, it involves a lot, it involves a very heavy spread, but I think that there is some value on it. It's going to be on Gonzaga minus 25.5, and there are a couple reasons why we like this number. First of all, Gonzaga and San Diego, I know that people have talked about how Gonzaga is always the best team in the West Coast Conference. That's definitely the case, but they have not realized how bad San Diego is in that conference. San Diego's been absolutely abysmal. They are 2-12 and in conference play. They are 9-20 and overall. This team isn't very good, and I expect them to struggle moving forward. Uh, Gonzaga won the first meeting against San Diego by 44 points. And to make that matter worse, that was on the road. So Gonzaga traveled to San Diego and won by 44. Meanwhile, Gonzaga also should be very motivated for this game. People are always wondering if Gonzaga will give every matchup they have 100% because they pretty much dominate their weaker conference uh, from top to bottom. However, Gonzaga should be very motivated after losing their last game to BYU. So now they definitely should be very motivated and focused to put in a very solid performance in this game. So that way they could... Uh, keep their number one uh, seed status. So look for them to come out very focused. I think they'll win this game by at least 30. Plus, San Diego just lost its last game to St. Mary's on the road by 29 points. St. Mary's is a solid team, probably going to make the tournament 23-6. and six. But at the end of the day, if you're losing to St. Mary's by 29 on the road, I think Gonzaga probably should beat you by around 35-40. to 40. So I think that game should get ugly. Plus, defensively, uh, San Diego, even though they're only giving up 71.7 points per game, which really isn't that bad, they just gave up 92 points to St. Mary's. And St. Mary's plays one of the slowest paces in the entire country. Uh, if you've seen St. Mary's play, you know what I'm talking about. So, so San Diego gave up 92 points to them. I think Gonzaga should go for around 95, I think potentially even more. 
And I think you should see Gonzaga win this game pretty easily. Gonzaga's averaging uh, over 21 more points per game, giving up four fewer points per game, averaging six more rebounds per game, five more assists, shooting 4% better from the floor. They're better in pretty much every statistic, and I just think that this game will be very one-sided. So for that reason, lean to Gonzaga at home, minus 25.5, and and they should be able to win that game by at least 30, and that will be the second play on the deep three. Now the third play is going to be in in the NBA, and although it might sound a little bit odd based on just the matchups at first glance, but I do think there is some value based on the injury reports, and that will be on the Golden State Warriors plus 12.5. Now there are a couple reasons why uh, we like the Warriors here in the spot. First of all, Golden State kept the last meeting close as they ended up only losing by five points uh, the last time these two teams faced. It's actually like a two-point game with about a minute and a half to go or so before LeBron hit a dagger step back to win to pretty much ice the game. But the Warriors have played the Lakers relatively close lately, and I think that this is too many points. But the main reason why uh, you have seen some money already pour in on the Warriors is because of the fact that it's already been announced LeBron James will not be playing in this game, as he is currently dealing with a groin injury. Uh, it's definitely a load management situation, considering the fact that he literally just dropped 40 points in his last game. But James is going to be out. We all have realized how bad uh, LeBron's teams have played whenever he is not in the lineup. I think you should see something similar. Plus, Anthony Davis is probable for this game, but he's still dealing with some sore uh, elbow issues after he banged it on the backboard going for a block against the Pelicans in the last game. So based on that, uh, I don't I, even if Davis plays, I don't think he's at 100%. Uh, LeBron's already out, so you already know how valuable he's going to be, and you already know how valuable he is and how the Lakers should look a little bit uh, less polished with him out of the lineup. Golden State, even though this team is terrible and they've gotten blown out and pretty much throughout the entire season. This team still plays hard, and I know that they hustle, and Andrew Wiggins actually played pretty decent basketball ever since he ended up joining the uh, Warriors. been playing pretty well, so I think you should see him play well once again. Uh, the Lakers, even though they just managed to beat the Pelicans, I think they'll probably win this game, but I do think that that 12 and a half is, a bit, is just too many points. I think this game should be within single digits, and I think that the Lakers should win by around 7 or 8. So, the third play is going to be on the Warriors plus 12.5. So, once again, the three plays on today's deep three are going to be Pacific minus 1.5, Gonzaga minus 25.5, and, and the Warriors plus 12.5. Now, quick reminder, uh, Scott Steen will be back for tomorrow's video, and then I will be taking over once again on Saturday, so keep that in mind. Other than that, though, let's get over the installment of the deep three here with winners and winners. We're going to look to all of you and your respective plays today. Bye, everyone.